Hi, this week's weekly roundup, we're seeing wireless devices, a handful of the usual robots, FPGAs, the new orange pie boards, and also the results of the 2016 Hackaday competition. Kickstarter has a few interesting things this week. First up on Kickstarter, there is another software-defined radio. It contains a software transceiver for CW, SSB, AM and FM transmissions. It runs off 13.8 volts at 2 amps and supplies USB power for an Arduino or any other low-powered board. If you're into LoRa, then the Marvin looks like a good development board. The onboard Atmega32U4 is programmed via a USB port and also contains Grove-compatible sensor ports and the microchip RN2483 LoRa module. Now this is a cool idea. This Kickstarter provides common resistor and capacitor values in a breadboard-friendly format. No more long, dangly resistor and LED leads anymore. Hmm, I might back this one. It looks good. Red Bear have some upgrades on Kickstarter. They have a BLE module, the Nano 2 and the Blend 2, all based on the upgraded NRF52832 Bluetooth module. The BLE module provides all the expected GPIOs from the Nordic module, whilst the Nano 2 has a lot less. The Blend 2 has a Cortex M3 MCU and the newer Nordic Bluetooth module. So you have just got your 3D printer all set up and functioning, but annoyed at that USB cable? The Borley 3D printing box is one way of solving that problem. It can connect to any 3D printer supporting G-code and then you connect via Wi-Fi. You could probably DIY your own based on a Raspberry Pi, but if you don't want to fiddle, then this might be the go. I'm always a big supporter of the underdog trying to make a go of something. The Chickbot is one of those. It is another DIY build-your-own robot that you can attach a Pi Zero, Arduino or even a BBC micro bit and get it to do all sorts of robotic things. Sixfab have an interesting IoT shield for the Pi. They have a 4G LTE, 3G and GPRS shield as well as GPS and XB. They're releasing them as open source and open hardware, whatever that means. Well, I think far too many people tout the open hardware logo too often. We'll see if they actually come up with the schematics. Okay, the VFune Plus isn't really a maker thing, but would be cool to hack it. It has HDMI input and sits on any standard glasses, giving you a sort of sort of heads-up display. Would be great to attach a chip to this, and it looks so stylish. Wow. Nothing really new and interesting on Indiegogo this week. If you missed it on Hacker Day, the 2016 Hacker Day competition winner was announced. DTTO Modular Robot, or DITO, whatever you call it, which came about by meeting a need in disaster situations. They can link up into a long chains and can traverse some fairly rough terrain using worm-like movements. They can also join up to move like spiders. Really cool. Other entries were a high accuracy tilt sensor, an imaging dome that used reflectance transformation, a printable robotic hand, and the Mac Duino. Then we have the pink Z1 board. Ever wanted to get into FPGAs? Well, this little board contains a Zinc XC7Z020 MCU, which contains a dual core Cortex A9 and an Artix FPGA. It also has onboard gigabit Ethernet, standard Arduino headers, micro SD, and HDMI out and also in. The Artix 7 is a great FPGA for someone just starting out and contains 1.3 million gates or 215,000 logic cells, 740 DSP slices and can support up to 6.6 gigabits per second transceiver speeds. This is really cool and I think I need to review this one. You all probably know about the Orange Pi. Well now there's the Orange Pi Zero, a tiny little SBC that contains the all winner H2 which is a quad core Cortex A7 running at 1.2 gigahertz up to 512 megs RAM, 100 meg Ethernet with PoE, USB 2.0, OTG and Wi-Fi, all for under $7 US. Nice. Then there's the Orange Pi PC2, which contains the all-winner H5, which is a quad-core Cortex A53. I think this is the first 64-bit Orange Pi. It also has 1 gig RAM, IR, USB, gigabit, Ethernet, CSI, HDMI, etc, etc. Seems I'm going to be busy for a while reviewing all these boards before Christmas. And on Tinty? Sometimes you just run out of GPIOs, don't you? Well, the TCA9538 is an I2C-based GPIO expander, giving you an additional 8 GPIOs. The great thing about this, 
it can support 3.3 or 5 volt logic levels. So if you are requiring logic level converters, then it'll be cheaper to just get one of these. In need of a relay board? This one contains headers to slot in an ESP or Arduino, or really any device that speaks I2C. Gives you 8 mains rated relays in a compact board. The d Duino is another ESP8266 board, but this one contains a small 1.3 inch OLED display. And they also have a Grove shield for the d Duino, giving you all the Grove thingy possibilities. The power DAC module contains the MCP4921, which is a biphasic DAC supposedly capable of delivering true AC waveforms. Or there's an LTC1661, which is a two-channel DAC, which is Digilent PMOD compatible. Or a four-channel 24-bit ADC using the LTC2492, which is also PMOD compatible. Then we have this cool ultrasound imaging processing module. Pretty expensive, but if you want to get into ultrasound, this might be the thing. You will, of course, need a whole bunch of extra stuff to get it going, but there it is. Over at Seed, there's a new Raspberry Pi GPS module. Well, it can talk either USB or UART, so you could attach it to anything that has a UART port. Comes with an external antenna connector and has 22 tracking channels. Remember the speech recognizer in one of my earlier weekly roundups? Well, Seed now have it in kit form. It contains a whole stack of Grove ports and a few Grove modules such as RTC, MP3 and IR. An alternative to the Red Bear BLE module is this one which is cheaper than the Kickstarter and you'll get it quicker. Contains all the usual stuff such as BLE, Cortex M4F MCU, 512K flash and 64K RAM and a bucket load of GPIO options. The mini spy camera over at Adafruit is a simple and cheap module capable of taking low res videos and photos. Control is via a 1Y interface and files are stored on an onboard SD card. Adafruit seem to have plenty of the new ESP32s in stock. Grab a couple while they're available. And if you have plenty of money growing on that money tree in the backyard, just pluck off a couple of notes and get yourself an Other Mill Pro, which can mill almost anything you want. PCBs, plastics, wood and light metals. Over at SparkFun, there is a Lilypad e-textile sewable kit, which contains everything you need to get started into e-textiles. And over at DigiKey, there's a fairly expensive but complete Cypress Semiconductor based Cortex M0 Plus evaluation board. Or, if you're into Echelon Corporation's LON works, then this is a handy USB to LON Talk adapter. LON is used extensively in building automation controlling things like lighting and HVAC. DigiKey also have an evaluation board for the AT Tiny817, which isn't yet supported under the Arduino IDE, so you'll have to use the Atmel Studio IDE. Banggood have an alternative to the 5 megapixel Pi camera with a standard MIPI CSI interface. There's also a cheap high precision radio frequency test kit, which, oh, okay, doesn't really say how accurate it is. Oh well, there it is, it's cheap. A cheap WiMOS motor shield capable of controlling two motors up to 15 volts and 3.2 amps maximum. Hmm, I might get some of these and just see how they cope with those ratings. I suspect I'd see some blue smoke. This is a cool DC step down module that has an LED display, input voltage range between 4.5 and 40 volts with an output voltage adjustable between 1.25 and 37 volts, and up to 3 amps. Banggood also have the Orange Pies, the Orange Pi Lite, the Orange Pi Plus 2E, and the Orange Pi Plus H3. If you're into FPV, then over at Elicro you can pick up a fairly cheap brushless motor, which seems fairly decent, but your mileage may vary for reliability. Thanks for watching this week's Weekly Roundup. As always, links are in the description below and also on my website. Don't forget you can follow and subscribe to me by clicking on any of the on-screen icons. And I'm also on Patreon. Supporting me on Patreon allows me to produce videos like this and helps me help you. So thanks again for watching and see you next week.